Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me briefly introduce our honorable chief guest. Dr. Rajiv Kumar Mahajan is an institution in himself. In a distinguished career of over 37 years across multiple domains as an operational weather forecaster, science administrator, strategy developer, management coach, and talent enabler, Dr. Mahajan has devised operational roadmaps and achieved organizational visions. In his current role as a scientific advisor at the Science and Engineering Research Board in the Ministry of Science and Technology, Sir enables next generation levels of science capital in India, wherein he oversees operations for research grants for various disciplines, as well as other R&D initiatives in the industry partnerships. Dr. Mahajan's career commenced as a military aviation meteorologist, a commissioned officer in the Indian Air Force. Besides being an application scientist in eight field stations of IAF, he has served six organizations in about a dozen profiles till date. He voluntarily contributes towards grooming of the Indian civil services aspirants as a chairperson for the mock interview boards. He is an international intergovernmental panel expert member for the technical commissions of the World Meteorological Organization and serves as a panelist for Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, a national agency of the Government of India. He wears another interesting hat of a council member for recommending the best corporate brands in the country through a recent initiative brand in sync listings by the Marketing Academy Discussion and Debate. Dr. Mahajan also has the distinction to serve the United Nations as Chief Meteorological Officer. He's been the ex-chairman, Board of Studies for Meteorological Division of Bhartia University, Coimbatore, as well as a research guide and examiner for two disciplines, Meteorology and Management. He serves as a visiting faculty at several institutes and universities in the country. Dr. Mahajan holds PhD and MPhil, both in Meteorology and Masters in three subjects, Mathematics, Defense and Strategic Studies, and Business Administration. He is an alumnus of the University of Delhi, the Madras University, and many other esteemed institutions. In recognition of his outstanding accomplishments, both the United Nations and the Indian Air Force have conferred several prestigious honors upon Dr. Mahajan. And during our recent interaction with Dr. Mahajan, we learned that he is also an avid marathoner, a pro cyclist, adventurist, photographer, blogger, as well as a keen yoga practitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this dynamic, wholehearted, and impact man. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Inaugural ceremonies in my times when I was a student like you were boring, right? Particularly by the time the chief guest arrived on the rostrum, already had, you know, people had spoken enough and uh, you are not ready to listen to any crap, but start with the business. Well, um, over a period of time, I, when I progressed in Indian Air Force as a career officer, I realized that the inaugural ceremonies continues to be boring for me further actually, right? And uh, I give you a small story. Uh, when I was in Defense Services Staff College at Wellington, where about 478 officers all across the country, as well as some about 78 officers from across the world, they uh, get trained in strategy and you know leadership for about an year or so. So our first. Uh, formal talk, these talks used to happen on Saturdays. First formal talk was by Dr. J.N. Dixit. Okay, have you heard about Dr. J.N. Dixit? He was the ambassador to Sri Lanka during 1989. So he started his, uh, you know, uh, talk uh, referring to me. I was perhaps in the second or third row and sitting like this. He said, you, the cross arm man, right? So I was really, you know, zapped. He said, what, what does it mean? And he just laughed. You don't get zittered, actually. I just wanted to open your arms because unless you open your arms, unless you re do not remain cross-legged, the ideas do not get received. So I'm sure I had a lesson on that day that 
life is learning right and when life is learning you can learn at any stage in life with all due respect to radhika whatever she has spoken about me i think the biggest quality in me today even is that at the 60th year of my life i continue to learn this is the word i never say to myself i i never say to myself i know i always say i really don't know right and then there is a possibility so here i am in front of you today uh, i am not going to give you the usual rhetoric about what the nation should do we are in the 75 year you know when it comes to the synergy kind of you know uh, mechanisms what should we do as a country what i am going to actually talk about very much at the ground level that what you students you need to do right in terms of taking it forward when it comes to the tech festivals and while i do i'm sorry i'm going to refer to these notes unfortunately your uh, friend dr rashneesh wadwar hardly gave me any time right uh, to uh, and whenever he says sir aapko yahan aana hai the answer is always yes right uh, there were some compulsions because i was to visit some hospital in ogral where pm is also coming but then uh, he solved this you know very amicably and he said sir we will do this way actually and that is how i am in front of you but i had no pre preparation time so what i did uh, like a like student i have scribbled scribbled some notes in the morning you know about 40 45 minutes i spent in my office and i am going to just go through my notes whatever i have written so i start from the vintage i am a vintage man you know i am in the running 30th you know 60th year when i said so if if uh, my I, my friends here and you know on the roast table will agree with me that at least 2.5 gen you know decades generations ahead or, or behind depending upon which end you are looking down you will find that technology per se is changing at a pace much faster than you can even perceive actually the biggest challenge today to the leaders is this fast changing technology how to not only match with this technology because by the time you realize that you know the technology is new uh within 2 years its shelf life is over actually okay so the biggest challenge not only the technocrat but the importantly the leaders today is how to match up the challenges thrown by the ever changing technology so for those of my generation you know when i say vintage who have seen kerosene lamps and perhaps uh, gas stoves where the cooking was being done at home i am from a very humble family and i take it with pride that i am a sunny of a laborer my mom in the small room where we were living you know no no kitchen no no bathroom okay uh, this stove was the mechanism there with the cook you know food was cooked actually so so from those days when i look ba look back uh, to the electricity when we you know add is as it evolved through the conventional means to non conventional means subsequently and now we are talking about the green energy it has been i will say bewildering changes you know for me for you for anybody you can't even you know perceive the young generation can't even perceive what i'm talking about right what was even even in today's world when it comes to our villages some of the villages do not have the conventional electricity where is the question of green change from communication through postcard i remember my air force academy days in 1987 when i joined my journey with the air force postcard and that antardeshia you know patra which we used to receive my god the only thing which we used to receive is was through hope and prayer we didn't even know that communication will be finally reaching us actually right so from those days of hope and prayer the advent of telephone the cell phone in your hands the ip phone and the satellite phone right are nothing but you know metamorphic changes these changes are i will say miracles in making now some would say that the changes are too fast but i think i will i would like to say they are not just exponential in nature these are the needs of the hour that is why the technology is changing so fast it is often said that an idea can change your life have you heard about this advertisement how many of you an idea can change your life yes whose idea is this idea okay wonderful 
so but but i i personally believe that this view of an idea is too myopic in nature actually if i have to be telling something about an idea i will say that an idea can change the whole world not just the life actually okay so so let us see how let me give you some examples actually the invention of sewing machines if you look at right look at invention of simply sewing machines when did it happen any idea the technocrats here when was this sewing machine invented anybody from audience students come on come on i was told stg students are very intelligent ek guess maro yaar some guess is it 300 years 400 years 500 years 700 years what when was this sewing machine was invented i also don't know actually okay so wild guess is about say 500 b 500 years ago so now look at this sewing machine this is a case in point you know i thought i must bring to you it is it not only heralded the textile revolution in the world over but also the industrial revolution it influenced the role and status of women in the country everywhere revolutionized the garment industry revolutionized the shoe making and upholstery and changed the world permanently the way we used to look at the fashion industry for that matter so the importance of idea when it comes to is not lost to us it is the first building block of any creative ecosystem so when my friend you know uh, my predecessor uh, was talking about what he's doing in the microbiology what you are going to do in terms of ideas on microbiology or anything for that matter is going to matter in times to come the main aim of ideation is to use creativity and innovation in order to develop solutions to importantly socially driven issues and the problems mentally it means going right in terms of concept and outcomes and there is no right and wrong in terms of outcomes per se it also means often questioning the accepted norms more often than not i have realized the youngsters today right are more matured more capacitated you know more in terms of fourth coming more in terms of candid when it comes to our generation they do ask questions they do question the acceptable norms actually this is what the way is more the questions more the answers more the ideas and a word of caution for for my young fellows as well as the you know younger faculties don't be deterred by if someone says don't this is a bloody stupid question don't get deterred by this no question is stupid only the answers could be stupid for that matter actually right i i i personally feel that way so so till you get answers keep questioning unless you question these kind of innovations which are in front of you will not happen as you are both young and restless are you restless no okay what about this side young and restless okay you must be having many ideas ideas are to seed innovation and need conclusive environment that is the ecosystem which is needed for taking shape and flourish in this light i must say and emphasize that today's world of design thinking have you heard about this term design thinking great one needs to link and synergize between three components importantly human psychology technology and importantly society and one of the critical component of this process of synergy is the ideation the idea per se so synergy 2022 at sgt when it comes to therefore are the test beds you know uh, the, this kind of test festivals i feel that these are the test beds somebody talked about pilot project i will say they are test beds for innovation and your sgt university by organizing is asking you to express design and demonstrate as to how good you can be in your ideas remember that there are no bad ideas it's just that some of them are just in time and some of the ideas are before in time so you could be lucky if it is before in time i have gone through the whole list of approved projects which were which were forwarded to me because i didn't know how much time i will have to spend with you with great interest and enthusiasm let me tell you each and every project i have gone through so many innovative ideas rather great ideas ideas believe me i am not saying just to pamper your ego i thought some of them were really great ideas 
spanning across fields like life sciences, reclamation, health sciences, tech innovation, and even I saw forensic sciences actually. This is raison d'etre of the tech festival at any university of this esteem. So this university deserves praise for not only just conducting it, but architecting it too well for its uh, you know, effectivity. <laughs> Lastly, in current times, India's moniker is about an enabling startup system. But that is not enough to succeed, I personally feel, and you should watch my this sentence which I'm going to say. You need to start up fine, but you need to stand while you start up. And while you stand, you need to also ensure that you stay up. How do you stay up? I will come to that. That means what I'm talking about purely sustainability of your startup system. You are the potential founders of many startups of formation. Tomorrow, believe me, Believe in yourself and this, you, will, you will know what I'm talking about. But there are you, you know, there, there are some people among you who are just focused on getting rich. That too very quickly. My, my own son, you know, he always talks about, I'm going to be very rich very soon. This is going to be my first package. This is how I'm going to lead my life, right? I caution you. Okay? Mo how, many, how many startups fail, if I have to ask you? What is the percentage? 88% is the average figure across the world, right? So uh, what I'm cautioning you, I'm, I'm not making scare among you, but what I'm trying to say, why those startups fail, you need to look at that angle actually. Why the startup, the founders are not able to match up the legitimate aspirations of the venture capitalists, that is what you have to look at. So if I say so, you must know that it happens rarely, if ever you succeed very quickly. It, it is a very, very rarest thing to happen. You are actually not just lucky, you are really a brain if that happens. So most importantly, you know, who, who falls short on, I will say, three components, ethics, integrity, and empathy. Whosoever is the founder and who, who falls short on these three components, do you know, ex, you know, extreme disservice and damage to not only themselves, their organizations, and this nation. But importantly, they do this disservice and damage to those kind of founders who are genuine in not only their aspirations, but their approach. Don't you think we have a role to play, not as a startup maker, not as a founder, not as the you know, unicorn of tomorrow, not as the company which is going to be listed in Forbes tomorrow, but we need to look at the life is no shortcuts and nobody dies of hard work. The party is just getting started, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you all the cheers. Jai Hind. Thank you.